on the next true crime. Could substantial evidence uncovered by a new coroner in 2015 prove Melissa's innocence? Despite her appeals, Melissa remains behind bars, but her father will be here. And he says the new evidence proves his daughter was wrongfully convicted. I'll see you next time. That's Thursday on the next True Crime. July 4th sale at Denver Mattress. Save 25% on our entire Doctor's Choice lineup or check out the Summit Firm, only $189.99. Plus four years no interest and free shipping. But hurry, the extended July 4th sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. This summer, get back to where you belong along 60 miles of beautiful wide open beaches where family vacations have never been so much fun. With every sunrise and each high tide, the beach is calling you to raise your spirits, make you smile, and bring your family closer together. So stop dreaming and start booking because we can't wait for you to get here. Visit Myrtle Beach and discover why happiness comes in waves. At Champion, we make buying new windows easy. And to help homeowners across America, we're making it easier than ever with the Champion Stimulus Plan. Right now, get 50% off new windows, plus low interest and 12-month no-payment financing options. Unlike some other companies, at Champion, we control every aspect of the process. We design it, we build it, we install it, and we guarantee it for life. Now's the time. Get 50% off replacement windows. Call now or learn more at GetChampionWindows.com today. Celebrate the freedom of a great night's sleep during the extended July 4th sale at Denver Mattress. Save 25% on our entire Doctor's Choice lineup or check out the Summit Firm, only $189.99. Plus four years no interest and free shipping. But hurry, the extended July 4th sale at Denver Mattress ends soon. Go to Amazon.com skills to enable Channel 3000 news briefs. Everybody and welcome to Live at Four. Mark is off this week. Eric Franke is filling in, and thanks for your help in Charlotte's yesterday for yeah. Mark and I. You guys had a big day yesterday. We did. We had a very big day. It was Mark and Dan's wedding day, and a little later in the show, we'll share some highlights uh, yeah, it was from pretty the wedding. Cool it was to a, watch that online. It was a beautiful far. evening, and we really appreciate your help. So thank you for no that. No problem. Well, here's what's making news on this Tuesday. Dana Fulton says we could see a few storms later on tonight. She'll have your full forecast coming up. And parents and child care workers are asking how they're supposed to make sure children are complying with Dane County's mask mandate order. And Governor Tony Evers says the pandemic has exposed that broadband access is essential and not a luxury. We'll tell you what the governor is doing to expand access across the state. But let's take a look outside today. It was a nice day. A little clouds made it feel a little bit cooler outside, but a perfect day to be out fishing on the lake. The weather words for today, storms developing later. Dana Fulton is out on the weather patio. Hi, Dana. Hey, it does feel a little stickier outside right now, but we're currently dry. You're right. The clouds kind of building in for us as we look at our Edgewater sky cam right now. No nope rain in Madison currently, but it is mostly cloudy. Temperatures are in the low 80s. That cloud coverage kind of held us back a bit with a light breeze and the mid to low teens coming from the south right now. Our storms have really slowed down, which is some good news for us, actually. If those storms slide through during the heat of the day, we have a better opportunity for severe weather. Right now, all of the stronger thunderstorms are north of La Crosse, so our timing's kind of moved back where we'll start to see storms entering southern Wisconsin over the next uh, about two to three hours and then getting closer to Madison later this evening. So we have a few hours uh, of dry time before the strong thunderstorms do develop. We still have an alert in the forecast for tonight because some of those thunderstorms could easily get severe later on tonight, bringing the chance for very high winds and heavy rainfall, uh, not rolling out the potential for some hail as well. So we keep a uh, close eye on our radars. The some storms do develop late for Wednesday. It will stay very soggy and stormy. The rain continues on and we could deal with some localized flooding by the end of Wednesday. The weekend should be mostly dry, but it is going to be a little hotter outside. We'll look at your full forecast in just a second. Right now, the roads do look fine. Here's the belt line at Todd Drive. Both east and westbound on the belt line seem to be rolling along smoothly. We don't have any major delays to report right now and on the interstate from Janesville to the belt line will be 25 minutes, 16 minutes to get from Sauk City to Middleton and some prairie to downtown. Only nine minutes this evening. 
All right, very good. We'll check back with you in just a little while, Dana. Thank you so much. Mm -hmm. Governor Tony Evers announced a new task force today on broadband access. And our Amy Reed is live to explain the goal behind this group. Amy? Access to broadband internet in our state has been a problem for a long time, and legislators from both sides of the aisle have tried to fix it. Evers said this task force is meant to find creative policy proposals that both the governor and the legislature could use to help bring better access to people in rural areas who right now don't have great access. And that's even more apparent now. Overnight, as Wisconsin schools shifted to virtual learning and a large number of people began working remotely, we changed how we live, work, and learn in order to adapt to this virus, which has highlighted the digital divide in our state. The task force has more than 20 people on it from both political parties and from different backgrounds. It has lawmakers and private industry experts. Their first meeting is later this summer, and Evers said they will produce annual reports. The work of this task force will certainly be of interest to those in rural areas who typically don't have as good of access to broadband internet, especially now as the talks continue for school this fall. All right, Amy, thank you. Wisconsin health officials have announced almost 1,000 new cases of COVID-19 in the state. Many of those cases we actually reported yesterday, so the News 3 Now tracker shows nearly 900 new cases today. Health officials say we've reported several record-breaking amounts of new cases during the last few weeks. Since February, more than 38,000 people have tested positive. Wisconsin, 827 people have died. Now, a number of states are now pausing or rolling back their reopening plans as COVID-19 cases increase. Cases of coronavirus continue to increase across the U.S., but the state seeing the most cases right now remains Florida. There are thousands of people currently hospitalized across the state because of the virus and dozens of Florida hospitals say they have reached ICU capacity. Health experts continue to point to the virus for a better timeline of when to reopen, specifically schools. If we get the virus under better control, clearly kids can get back into school safely. But it does not appear the virus is under control in many states, including Texas, California, and Florida, which is the nation's epicenter. President Trump is lashing out as more states lean toward online instruction in schools this fall. Meanwhile, the president's Democratic rival issued one of his most forceful rebukes to date over the administration's handling of the pandemic. Natalie Brand is at the White House with the latest. You should... Uh... Find yourself in an interview with CBS News, President Trump questioned the motives of some local officials after several cities and states have rolled back reopening plans and are preparing schools for continued distance learning this fall. We have to open our schools. But I also say a decision like that is politics because we're starting to do very well in the polls. Mr. President, please listen. To your public health experts. Democratic challenger Joe Biden forcefully called out the president's stance on reopening the country as COVID cases surge in some states. Do your job, Mr. President, because if we can't deal with the public health crisis, we can't deal with the economic crisis. The debate over reopening comes as White House officials have begun promoting talking points attacking the federal government's top infectious disease expert, Dr. Anthony Fauci. The president's social media director, Dan Scavino, posted this political cartoon in an attempt to discredit Dr. Fauci, who appeared in an online forum Tuesday. Unequivocally, you're seeing truly more new cases. In addition, we're seeing now more hospitalizations. This is a, a serious time with rising cases across Louisiana and, and all across the Sun Belt. Vice President Mike Pence traveled to Louisiana to discuss COVID-19 with state officials there as rising case numbers have caused that state to shut down its bars and mandate the use of face masks. Natalie Brand, CBS News, the White House. Dr. Fauci says officials should try as best they can to keep children in schools, depending on the dynamics of the coronavirus in their area. Meanwhile, Senate Majority Leader Mitch McConnell said this week that any next phase COVID relief bill from Congress must include provisions to get kids back in the classroom. Businesses have been putting up signs to encourage customers to wear masks, but what about daycare centers? Yeah, getting a bunch of five-year-olds to wear their masks can be a difficult task. Amanda Quintana is here with how one daycare is helping children understand. Amanda? 
Weeble World Daycare in Stoughton opened back up in May with 20% capacity. Now it's up to 80 or 90%, but they're still facing many challenges with the pandemic. Hiring more staff needed to do drop-offs and pickups outside of the building, along with health screenings before escorting kids to the classroom. Also making sure employees and kids have PPE. And now that includes masks for kids over five. Owner Maggie Gasner says it's been better than expected, but some kids need a little extra guidance and mask options like ones that tie in the back or instead of around the ears where that can be uncomfortable. We're also acknowledging and validating their feelings. So if they're struggling and saying, I hate this, I don't like wearing masks, we remind them that we're all in this together, that it's temporary, it's not gonna last forever, um, but also that, yeah, nobody's, like, nobody's liking wearing a mask, but it's what we have to do to keep each other safe. When playing outside, the kids can spread out and take their masks off. So counting down the time until recess is another way to incentivize wearing masks along with extra cleaning and supplies. These challenges are stopping many daycares from being able to reopen. At six, we'll tell you about a national study showing 18% of child care centers are still closed right now. And two out of five daycares will have to close permanently without more support. That's some tough choices, some tough times. Amanda, thank you. Dane County Health officials say they received more than 100 complaints about about people following the county's mask mandate. 138 different complaints were filed yesterday. 102 of them were regarding Hellbox Coffee in Middleton, which was part of an online controversy regarding a sign that allegedly said mask-free zone. Five of the complaints were filed against the coffee shop's Madison location, which actually closed several weeks ago. New York Governor Andrew Cuomo says people traveling from Wisconsin must quarantine upon arriving in New York. Wisconsin and Minnesota were both added to the list of 22 states. While New York's rate of infection is slim, uh, sl slumping, states like Wisconsin are seeing an increase in cases. The Madison Police Department is asking the community for help to identify the people suspected of attacking Senator Tim Carpenter on June 23rd. Carpenter said he was trying to take a picture of a group of protesters on the 23rd of June when he was attacked. He said he fell to the ground and was beaten by the group. Carpenter had to have surgery for wounds he suffered in the, attack, in the attack, but is expected to make a full recovery. Anyone who recognizes the people in the photo here is asked to call Madison Area Crime Stoppers. The U.S. government carried out its first federal execution in almost two decades this morning in Indiana. 47-year-old Daniel Lewis Lee was executed by lethal injection. A witness says the convicted murderer admitted mistakes, but claimed, quote, I didn't do it until the very end. His final words were, you're killing an innocent man. Lee, a white supremacist, was convicted back in 1997 of murdering a family of three in Arkansas, including an eight-year-old girl. The execution came just hours after the U.S. Supreme Court allowed the execution to go forward. President Trump has long said he wanted to revive the federal death penalty. It's always tough. You're talking about the death penalty, but when you talk about people that did what this particular person did, that's tough also. Civil rights groups protested the execution and relatives of Lee's victims also tried to halt it, citing concerns about the coronavirus pandemic. In addition to Lee, the Department of Justice says four other men will be executed by January of next year. Jeffrey Epstein's former girlfriend, Ghislaine Maxwell, pleaded not guilty in federal court this afternoon. Maxwell is accused of helping Epstein recruit and sexually abuse girls from 1994 to 1997 and lying about her role in depositions in 2016. She will remain in jail until trial after she was denied bail because of a risk that she would rather flee than face charges. As the judge explained her reasoning for denying bail, Maxwell dropped her head repeatedly. At one point, she appeared to wipe a tear from underneath one eye. There's more to come today on Live at 4. Parents are still wondering what school will look like in the fall as the pandemic continues. Well, when we come back, we'll talk with Dr. Jeff Potoff about what needs to be done to ensure children can return safely to the classroom. You're watching News 3 Now, Live at 4. Wells Asphalt Paving, expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project for residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements. Call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Hi, I'm Brian from McGann Furniture in Baraboo. What does free mean? No cost, right? 
We've all seen ads about free things included with your purchase. Free carpet pad or installation with your carpet, free love seat with your sofa, two window blinds for the price of one. But we know better, right? At McGann's, free means free. Free delivery and setup with purchases of $500 or more within 50 miles of Baraboo. Shop McGann Furniture in downtown Baraboo. You'll be glad you did. The time is right to do something nice for your home. Why not replace your gutters with LeafGuard, the only gutter system that has earned the good housekeeping seal of approval. Hi, I'm Andrew Larson, owner of Larson Home Services. LeafGuard's patented one-piece seamless design keeps leaves and debris out, which means no more clogs, guaranteed. LeafGuard carries a lifetime warranty, so your home's foundation will be protected forever, and our customers couldn't be happier. They're the best. I don't have to worry about the, the gutters getting clogged up with the seeds, the branches, the, the dirt, the, the roof sheddings, and it's just one less worry for me. And right now, save big on your new LeafGuard brand gutter system and get some incredible extras. Order now and save 75% on installation labor, get free financing for a year, and a $100 Visa gift card. Call to set up your free estimate today. We are the Thrivers, women with metastatic breast cancer. Our time for more time has come. Living longer is possible and proven in postmenopausal women taking Cascali plus Fulvestrant. In a clinical trial, Cascali plus Fulvestrant helped women live longer with HR positive HER2 negative metastatic breast cancer and it significantly delayed disease progression. Cascali can cause lung problems or an abnormal heartbeat, which can lead to death. It can cause serious liver problems and low white blood cell counts that may result in severe infections. Tell your doctor right away if you have new or worsening symptoms, including breathing problems, cough, chest pain, a change in your heartbeat, dizziness, yellowing of the skin or eyes, dark urine, tiredness, loss of appetite, abdomen pain, bleeding, bruising, fever, chills, or other symptoms of an infection are or plan to become pregnant or breastfeeding. Avoid grapefruit during treatment. Ask your doctor about living longer with Kiskali. Wells Asphalt Paving. Expert paving for over 40 years. Now offering $250 off your asphalt paving project. For residential and commercial, from new construction to replacements, call today and save at Wells Asphalt Paving. Welcome back, everyone. School districts across the country are grappling with plans to address learning in the fall. That's really a tough one, isn't it? That might mean smaller class sizes, less movement through buildings, and fewer visitors. Sebastian Powell is principal at East Lake Elementary. That's in Parsippany, New Jersey. He's spending the summer preparing for his school's reopening. So you're going to have half of the classroom uh, on each week. The students will come in one week. They'll be here for four days and then they'll go to distance learning the next week while the other cohort comes in. Uh, not really fair, but it is safe. I would not step into school not to decorate, not to collect my things. That's Andrea Baysmore, a 27-year-old first grade teacher in Dallas. She contracted COVID-19 a few weeks ago and is refusing to return to her classroom. School districts across the country are each coming up with their own plan, and it's up to the superintendents to decide whether to shut school down. We get a quick check of the markets. Despite big tech underperforming, stocks rose today. The Dow with sizable gains, closing up 557 points. NASDAQ added almost a 1% with a 98-point jump. The S&P surged 42 points. Now, two of the biggest things on people's minds as the pandemic continues. Of course, will children be going back to school in the fall? And what will sports look like for the really the rest of the year? A lot of questions about that. Dr. Jeff Potoff is the chief quality officer at UW Health and our frequent guest here on Live at 4 and News 3. Welcome back, Dr. Potoff. Good to see you. You know, good to be back. Hey, one quick thing. I just want folks to know that I am in a large room by myself and we want people to be able to uh, hear me articulate and see my lips if they're hard of hearing. So uh, even though we wear our masks almost all the other times around here at UW Health, I am going to take it off just so that uh, we can communicate better with the audience. And we want to mention the same thing. We are off and we're at a distance. A lot of times we as anchors are the only people in the room mm -hmm. or in a distance from a from a camera operator as well. We've got a few emails asking, but we always yeah, move we have with our these map. in the building and there is an exemption from Wisconsin broadcasters as well. Every we time we leave the set, we put them back on. Yeah, so. We want to make sure we get these very important messages clearly across. Let's talk about schools, Dr. Potoff. This is something 
so many superintendents are dealing with. I'm trying to keep up with the emails from my children as they get ready to, to figure out what they're going to do. What are you guys, are you talking to superintendents? Um, uh, how, are, how are you guys involved in this process? You know, yeah, I've had a couple conversations. I know that they've been talking to public health. And uh, to be honest, uh, they, they've got their work cut out for them. Um, on one hand, we, we know, and, and they certainly know, that kids definitely benefit by having in-person instruction. And on the other hand, we're in the midst of a pandemic. Uh, and although there are some countries who have had school, uh, none have had school when their cases are rising and there's such community spread. Uh, so to balance those two things, the need to try to get kids in school uh, and the uh, logistical obstacles of making sure it's safe to have them in school it is a challenge that all school districts across the country are facing right now. What do you think schools have to be keeping in mind in order to do it safely for students? Yeah, so it's really those three things we talk about and you have to apply it to schools. So good sanitation practices, how are they going to keep surfaces clean? They're going to have to discuss mask wearing and how that's going to work both with students, older students and very young students, as well as all of their staff. Uh, and then really the thing that I think can be the most challenging is socially distancing kids in a classroom when really our schools aren't set up for that. Our educational system with group work makes that a little bit more difficult. Uh, so I think those are some of the challenges that our school leaders are, are really trying to work through and find a, find a solution. It's so tough because, you know, kids eat better when, you know, some kids don't have food at home. We've talked about right. that in the past. There's so many positives to being in the classroom setting, and, and a lot of us who have kids can't teach them as well as our <laughs> teachers can either. Let's move on to sports because that's another big thing. We're heading just weeks away from high school football programs starting to open. Uh, what, what recommendation? I mean, are some sports okay and others not? You know, I think some sports are easier to do safely uh, than others. I think when you look at team sports where there's really no way to play the game unless you have uh, those athletes close together uh, in, in, in close physical contact, those sports get a lot harder to do. You know, at the professional level, maybe you can do daily testing, uh, you know, like they're doing in Florida, isolate the basketball players uh, in one location. You know, for high school prep sports, that's going to be hard to do. Those kids have got to go home. They're going to be in the community. Uh, we probably don't have the resources to do the testing as often. Uh, so I think, you know, our local schools and those sports uh, are going to have a, a bigger challenge than, say, even the professional sports as far as just getting players on the field. And then we have the whole issue of what to do with stands, uh, people in the stands. Uh, how do you safely uh, do that? Can you socially distance? Uh, will they have to wear a mask the whole time? What will that look like? So again, uh, significant challenges as we look forward to fall sports. And still no clear answers. You raised a really good point earlier, Eric, about should all sports be created yeah, can equal? You play can you golf, play golf? But not football. But not soccer. soccer. Right. right, right. right. Dr. Right. Potoff, let, let's talk a little bit about uh, the hospitalization rate at Dane, in Dane County. It went up again today and certain areas areas of the community are being affected more by the virus than others. Yeah, so you know this hospitalization rate is something that we watch closely because uh, we know other states who are a few weeks ahead of us, uh, there is a delay between the big increase in cases which we are experiencing in Wisconsin and when we start to see hospitalizations. Uh, you know, the day that I get diagnosed, I might not be that sick. Uh, but, you know, days later, uh, I start to get sick enough where I need uh, to be in a hospital. So we're watching that very closely. Uh, that worries us. You know, the other thing that really bothers us in healthcare is uh, just like across the country here in Dane County, we are seeing that African Americans and Hispanics uh, are disproportionately affected uh, by COVID-19 uh, and not because they're somehow different or they're made different genetically. Uh, it really has to do with social determinants of health. Uh, and, and their um, and kind of their ability uh, to uh, get great care in the medical system. Uh, so um, that, that bothers us. I think that should bother everyone uh, that a certain segment of our population uh, is suffering more with this disease uh, than others of us. Boy, so much work to do, both from a social aspect, uh, education, and, and health care as well. Dr. Potoff, always great to talk to you. We really appreciate your contributions and in informing people here. Yeah, thank, thank you so much. Thanks for being so generous with your time and guiding us through this yeah. week by week. We, we appreciate it very much. All right. Have a good afternoon, guys. All right. You great too. to see you. And we'll be right back. I wanted my hepatitis C gone. I put off treating mine. Eplusa treats all main types of chronic hep C. Whatever your type, Eplusa could be your kind of cure. I just found out about mine. I knew for years. 
Inclusa has a 98% overall cure rate. I had no symptoms of hepatitis C. Mine caused liver damage. Epclusa is only one pill, once a day, taken with or without food for 12 weeks. Before starting Epclusa, your doctor will test if you have had hepatitis B, which may flare up and could cause serious liver problems during and after treatment. Tell your doctor if you have had hepatitis B, other liver or kidney problems, HIV or other medical conditions, and all medicines you take, including herbal supplements. Taking amiodarone with Epclusa may cause a serious slowing of your heart rate. Common side effects include headache and tiredness. Ask your doctor today if Epclusa is your kind of cure. America, we want to help get you back to it. And here's how, with the Ford Promise. Visit your Ford dealer. Finance a new, certified, pre-owned, or used vehicle through Ford Credit. And if you lose your job, you can return it for up to one year from the day you bought it. You can also get 0% APR financing for 72 months across the Ford lineup. Let us help get you back to it with the Ford Promise. Great glasses at iMart Express is something that you can always count on. Now for a limited time at our lowest prices ever. Get one pair of single vision glasses for $20 and one pair of progressives for $30. This won't last long, only at iMart Express. Throughout the COVID-19 pandemic, Baca Enterprises is truly humbled and thankful to all of our employees, residents, families, and vendors for their patience and cooperation. Our employees have gone above and beyond with sanitation efforts, altering their daily routines, all while spreading joy and happiness throughout our communities. Looking to the future, Baca Enterprises will be here for you. To provide a sense of security and to provide comfort by keeping you safe and healthy. Baca Enterprises is helping you live life with confidence. Visit our website to schedule your tour today. We've got the power. The power centers of Madison. Our highly trained service department has the power to keep your equipment running like new. We service all makes and models, from minor tune-ups and maintenance to major overhauls. Our certified mechanics can get your equipment up and running quickly. If you like to fix it yourself, between the two stores, we have the parts you need. At the power centers of Madison, Chris Reese is tracking chances of storms Wednesday as the humidity ramps back up. And Wednesday is the new tax day deadline. But if you've already filed, we'll tell you how your taxes are going to change next year. See you starting at 430. Take a look at this. How not to inflate a tire. It happened in Russia. The crew trying to hold oh, a flame. Whoa. Trying to hold a flame to a tire that had been injected with some kind of starting fluid. Apparently... Uh, that's a way to get the, the tire to set on the rim, of course. The problem is these guys didn't do it quite right. Led to that little bit of an explosion there. Just a little explosion. Hey, the good news here is everybody walked away ah. without any serious yeah. injuries. Starter Certainly fluid and fire. No, not, no. not a good combo. Might have skipped, uh, <laughs> their hearts might have skipped a little bit here. Watch that. Oh, my gosh. Thank goodness nobody yeah. was standing right Crazy. in front of that thing. That is unreal. All right, Mark, as you may have noticed, he's enjoying a little time off this week. Yeah, he's getting used to a couple new titles in his life. Husband and newlywed. How about that? Mark and his husband, Dan, were married last evening in a beautiful ceremony at Fresco on the rooftop of the Madison Museum of Contemporary Art in downtown Madison. Mark and Dan's dear friend, longtime friend, attorney Shana Lewis presided over this ceremony, which happened on the 20th anniversary of the day Mark and Dan met. As Mark said in his vows, he likes to take things slow. <laughs> that got a good laugh from everybody. Congratulations, guys. Boy, love wins and conquers all, even in a pandemic. Very nice nice ceremony and they exchanged some very uh, meaningful cool vows you were there right there you're one of the few that got the uh, that was on hand well it's a pandemic so you can only have 10 people right. uh, but it was a beautiful evening the weather was perfect and you know what the greatest thing about it was honestly that it was just so great to have something joyful and happy, and happy to right. celebrate yeah. it just felt we wonderful. needed it in the newsroom <laughs> we were all watching online so it was cool to experience that at least we did so virtually yeah but we were all watching the newsroom too so it was pretty it pretty was nice. a wonder wonderful Wonderful event. Yeah, yeah so now they're having a little honeymoon week this week. They deserve it. Mark, we got it covered for you. Don't worry about <laughs> yeah, it. And the weather it. cooperated last night. Tonight, though, you know, we were a little worried. It might get a little uh, little nasty out there. It Dan. could. It could get a little bumpy outside. The good news, again, the timing's really backed up. So we were looking at more of an afternoon event initially. Now it seems like more of a late evening overnight event.
The storms are starting to enter into the areas north of us. We'll take a closer look at a watch now in effect and our storm timing right after the break. Now, a WISC-TV editorial with editorial director Neil Heinen. As coronavirus cases continue to rise, a quote from a University of Florida epidemiologist is just striking in its simplicity and directness. Dr. Cindy Prinz said, I really do think we could control this, and it's the human element that is so critical. It should be an effort of our country. We should be pulling together when we're in a crisis, and we're definitely not doing it. Florida is, of course, shattering records for new cases, but the country has the worst COVID outbreak in the world. The human element comes to play in the choices we make. Some are harder than others. Wearing masks and staying out of crowds should be easy. Whether or not to reopen schools is harder. Apparently, politics is hardest of all. But health experts are clear about this. We could control it. We have chosen not to. With the Volkswagen community-driven promise, you can enjoy exciting offers. And at participating dealers, you can shop at our place or yours. Click, call, or come by your Volkswagen dealer today and get 0% APR financing for 72 months on select 2019 and 2020 models. Are you one of the 100 million Americans that suffer from chronic pain? Hi there, my name is Tim O'Brien, owner of The Healthy Place. I want you to know about an all-natural product called Cura Relief. With nutrients like boswellia and curcumin, it targets the root of your pain, inflammation. Most people feel a difference in less than 45 minutes. Stop the pain and the drugs naturally with Cura Relief. Stop by one of our four medicine-based locations or check us out online at findyourhealthyplace.com. The Healthy Place. I am crushing this to-do list. Let me see. Smart home upgrade? Mm -hmm. Home gym? Check. What about the window siding and doors? Uh... Cross something important off your list. Free installation on all windows, siding, and doors. And no interest for one year. The biggest sale of the year is here. Free installation ends soon. Call now. For quality windows, siding, and doors, call 866 for felt Co. USAA is made for what's next. We're helping members catch up by spreading any missed USAA insurance payments over the next 12 months so they can keep more cash in their pockets for when it matters most. Find out more at USAA.com. According to the Howell family, Auntie Jen's friend and her son can live with them as long as they want. According to the census, it doesn't matter if you're related or not. Shape your future. Start here. Complete the census at 2020census.gov. Wow, you ready? Yeah, let me just grab my wallet. Uh-oh, I've seen this before. Wallet way too big, skinny jeans too skinny. I'll just carry it. Before you break something, you should know you don't actually need a wallet. With BMO Harris, you can just take cash out with your phone. Or if you need to, you can pay him with Zelle. That works? Yeah. You're stuck, aren't you? Smile. Woo. Those jeans are way too tight. That feeling you get when no wallet is no big deal. That's the BMO effect. Buy a select 2020 Volkswagen today. And for the next six years, you won't pay a single cent in interest. Six years of interest-free payments. Click, call, or come by today. News 3 Now First Warn Weather is brought to you by Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Discover a shopping and design experience as comfortable as the furniture. Lazy Boy Home Furnishings and Decor. Schedule your free design consultation today. So we do have a severe thunderstorm watch now in effect for the western edge of the state stretching up towards La Crosse. So Crawford, Richland and Grant counties included in that Camp Douglas uh, and heading north of the Dells. That's where the storms are just north of right now. This is the line that we're watching. Again, it's it's north of our area, north of 90, but there is a severe thunderstorm warning. It uh, looks like a tornado warning also north of Black River Falls. So not quite in our area. It's really slowed down. So we're seeing higher rainfall totals coming through just south of Eau Claire.
as those storms have passed through very slowly. That's all along a cold front. As they sink further south, we'll see our winds pick up. We'll have those storm chances passing through later this evening, but it's not going to be during the heat of the day, and the storms are going to lose a little bit of steam as they do move southeast. So it is a little bit of good news for us that much of the day has stayed dry, and our storm chances are now passing through overnight. So again, as you can see, they're all north of La Crosse and Camp Douglas in the northwest corner of the state. We get closer to about 7 o'clock. We start to see those showers enter in the very edge of our area. Uh, really not until about 9, 10, 11. We're going to hold off for quite some time until those showers and thunderstorms sink further south. They continue past midnight into early Wednesday morning. Wednesday morning will likely get a break around 6, 7, 8 o'clock. The showers from that first round die down, but in the afternoon we'll have another chance for scattered showers and thunderstorms to surge back up. And some of these storms could bring some very heavy rainfall passing through and some stronger wind gusts. Our storm chances today, again, really expecting the western edge of the state to pick up the strongest thunderstorms, uh, but we will see a marginal risk for severe weather on Wednesdays. So pretty much everyone has the chance to see a thunderstorm tomorrow, but our severe chance is not as quite, quite as high for Wednesday because it is going to be so cloudy outside. It's a little cooler. That cooler air doesn't quite fuel the thunderstorm chances. The warmer air definitely adds to the uh, amplification of getting more severe weather. So Wednesday we have a soggy, soggy, stormy day and our rainfall totals are really going to add up. This is looking overnight throughout the day on Wednesday and then our totals by the end of Wednesday evening. And notice we could easily see some areas get close to three inches of rainfall. Most of the area picking up at least an inch of accumulation. Uh, so no widespread flooding concerns, but those lower lying areas, the areas that are, are prone to flooding that we all know about, we'll be keeping a close eye on that, especially for areas west of Dane County, Iowa, and the southern edge of Sauk County right now, still just a little saturated. We have alert days in the forecast also for Saturday and Sunday because it's going to be so warm outside. Our warm trend continues in our 6 to 10 day outlook though tomorrow it will be just a little cooler because of the cloud coverage. 78 the high for tomorrow with scattered showers and thunderstorms. We'll be in the mid 80s on Thursday with mostly sunny skies and alert days in the forecast for Saturday and Sunday because high temperatures will be in the 90s and heat index readings will be close to 100. So the heat's right. coming back. If you've been coming missing back it, for the it's weekend. coming back. All, All right. right, thank you, Dana. Thanks, Dana. When the coronavirus pandemic started in the U.S., it left millions of people without jobs and children, of course, out of schools. A recent study finds that women have been hit the hardest, especially working moms. Nichelle Medina reports. T. Lopez has been in entertainment for 20 years as a singer. TV host and now podcaster. Put your shoes on. But when the coronavirus hit and schools closed, the mother of two added teacher to her duties. F? Yes. We've just all got to survive, and that's what I feel like it's been. It's been survival mode. Her husband also has a full-time job, and they're expecting another child. Keeping up with her own job during the pandemic got a lot harder. There were times when I would wait until they went to sleep. But then I'm exhausted <laughs> trying to work. A USC study finds she's not alone. One in three working moms reported being the main caregiver in a two-parent household. That's compared to one in 10 working fathers. I was not surprised to see that women were doing more of the care. Study author and working mom Hema Zamoro found women were also more likely to lose jobs during the pandemic. Female employment dropped 13 percentage points between March and early April compared to 10 percentage points for men. Once women leave the labor force, it's very hard to come back. The majority of women surveyed also reported reducing their work hours to take care of their kids. With the stress of juggling it all, there's a rise in depression and anxiety. I think in this quarantine time, I've given myself more permission to just, I can't do it today. Check, check. Lopez is taking it one day at a time. She's still working from home, but is focusing on the quality time she gets with her daughters. I was in there. As she prepares for the family's new edition. Nichelle Medina, CBS News, Los Angeles. And USC will continue to collect data for the study. If schools can't reopen this fall, Zamaro fears women will face even more psychological distress, which could also have an impact, of course, on their children. We'll be right back. Welcome to the all new dwellings.
Month's weekly Ozempic is helping many people with type 2 diabetes like Emily lower their blood sugar. A majority of adults who took Ozempic reached an A1C under 7 and maintained it. Here's your A1C. Oh, my A1C is under 7. And you may lose weight. Adults who took Ozempic lost on average up to 12 pounds. I lost almost 12 pounds. Oh! For those also with known heart disease, Ozempic lowers the risk of major cardiovascular events such as heart attack, stroke, or death. It lowers the risk. Oh? And I only have to take it once a week. Oh. Ozempic is not for people with type 1 diabetes or diabetic ketoacidosis. Do not share needles or pens. Don't reuse needles. Do not take Ozempic if you have a personal or family history of medullary thyroid cancer, multiple endocrine neoplasia syndrome type 2, or if you are allergic to Ozempic. Stop taking Ozempic and get medical help right away if you get a lump or swelling in your neck, severe stomach pain, itching, rash, or trouble breathing. Serious side effects may include pancreatitis. Tell your doctor if you have diabetic retinopathy or vision changes. Taking Ozempic with a sulfonyl urea or insulin may increase low blood sugar risk. Common side effects are nausea, vomiting, diarrhea, stomach pain, and constipation. Some side effects can lead to dehydration, which may worsen kidney problems. Once weekly Ozempic is helping me reach my blood sugar goal. You may pay as little as $25 for a one-month or three-month prescription. Ask your health care provider today about once weekly Ozempic. Here's to the road ahead. Trust Toyota to be here for you. The best new cars make the best used cars. That's why every Toyota certified used vehicle gets a 160-point inspection, new warranty starting the day you purchase, one year of roadside assistance, and more. Get as low as 0% APR financing on select Toyota certified used models. See your dealer for details. All from the brand you trust, today and tomorrow, Toyota. Madison's best kept $150 secret. Now open in Fitchburg. Tonight at five area school districts are releasing their plans on how they will have schooling in the fall, how parents are involved in the process of helping decide. That's at five. Showers and thunderstorms tonight and tomorrow will add to the humidity, but will lessen the heat a little. Warmer weather returns by the end of the week, though. My first warm forecast at five. And ahead at six, a new study finds a large percentage of child care centers won't be able to recover from the pandemic. We'll have more on this story tonight on News 3 Now at 6. It's a nice day for a little <laughs> swim at the Vila Zoo. Nunique Barrett, I don't know which one that is. But yeah, it's a live look at the Henry Vila Zoo. Enjoying the water. I love when they do the backstroke here. <laughs> yeah, exactly. It just looks so relaxing. <laughs> it's going to warm up for them, though, by the weekend. They're going to need that cool water. A nine-year-old chess prodigy hopes the pandemic doesn't derail his dream of becoming the world's youngest grandmaster. CBS News first introduced you to chess champion Tani Adewumi last year. He and his family were living in a New York City homeless shelter after fleeing the terror group Boko Haram in their home country of Nigeria. Now, a lot has changed since then. Vladimir Dutier has their story of remarkable perseverance. For now, Tiny Adewumi's dream of becoming the world's youngest grandmaster has come to a stalemate. Why do you only have three and a half years? Because I'm nine. The world record is 12 years and seven months. So the longer we are on lockdown and the longer this pandemic lasts, the shorter your time to be the world's youngest grandmaster. Mm -hmm. But you still think you can do it? Yes. Last year, the then third grader won the New York State Chess Championship, learning to play while living in a Manhattan homeless shelter. Tani's story of perseverance received support from around the world. The Atawumi say they are truly touched by the generosity. Within two weeks, they rent a house for us for a year. It's a purely miracle. And they're committed to paying that kindness forward. The family started a foundation that helps immigrants struggling with homelessness, a struggle they know all too well. I really thank God that I have a place to live because it's not easy. Enduring faith, the family hopes can inspire others. They're sharing their story in a new book titled, My Name is Tani, and I Believe in Miracles. Do you still believe in miracles? Yes. Tell me why. Because um, God is always on my side, and uh, he always does miracles. God did wonders in me and my family's life.
And there are more wonders ahead for Tani. Comedian Trevor Noah is developing a film based on his life story. How exciting is that? I mean, it's very exciting when you get a movie made by, like, made for you. You don't just use it as, okay, fine, and popular, right? And then you, you get spoiled. But then <laughs> that, uh, you use it to, like, help yourself grow better. It's that humility that keeps him grounded through difficulty and defeat. Bam! When you lose, what is that feeling like? You don't actually lose, you learn. What does that mean? Uh, the meaning is that you lost for a reason and you have to figure that out. Do you think that people have something to learn from your story? Yes, that uh, never, never give up. Always try your best. Just keep playing until the end. So your first move is what? E4. Pawn to E4. A lesson in the game of chess and in the game of life. You already knew my moves before I knew them. <laughs> Man, if life is really like chess, I'm in trouble. <laughs> and here's the book. Though he is doing some playing online during the shutdown, Tani told us he can't wait to get back to real life tournaments, playing his opponents face to face, and continuing his journey towards becoming a grandmaster. Vladimir Dutit, CBS News, New York. It is so fun following him, isn't it? It is. And we all want to get back to normal, yeah, right? And see true. all the kids be able to compete so again. So true, yeah. Well, coming up next, we're several months into the pandemic now. How are you coping with all the stress? Well, successful coping strategies to live by the phrase, less is more. UW Health psychologist Shalom Gain will explain when Live at 4 continues. Stay with us. of Stoughton Health Home Health Department right here on the corner of 51 and Highway B. Victoria, tell us about the exciting news that Stoughton Health has to share about this new beautiful building. Sure, Stoughton Health was gifted this building from McFarland State Bank and we are now housing our Community Health and Wellness Center in this building and we also have our Home Health Department that is housed out of here as well. So Home Health, take us through what that means and the scope of things that Home Health providers cover. Sure, Home Health providers cover uh, physical therapy, occupational therapy, skilled nursing services, and we also have home health aides to assist with bathing and other activities of daily living that our clients need assistance with. I would imagine through this type of care, bonds and friendships are, are truly built. Yes, and I think that's one of the, the strengths of a, of a home health program is those relationships that we build with our clients and our patients in the home health program. When you are actually sitting down at someone's kitchen table or you're sitting across from them on a sofa or you're sitting in their bedroom and you're you're talking to them about some of their most intimate needs and what their um, what their cares are you form a bond with that person that lasts for a very long time absolutely now during this COVID-19 time obviously there's a risk with coming into contact with people but it's something it's still a service that you need to provide how are you and all of the providers really making sure that everybody is the safest that they can be Yes, we do screening upon entering into the home. We are masking, we are following all the CDC recommendations and guidelines and uh, doing everything that we can with our checklist to make sure that we are providing that high quality care and keeping our patients safe. I'm hoping they'll let me go along to this first home health patient. I'm Emmy Fink and you're buzzed into Madison. Champion Windows is back with our best sale of the year. It's the Champion Stimulus Plan. Right now, get 50% off new windows, plus low interest and 12-month no payment financing options. Call now for your free estimate or learn more at GetChampionWindows.com today. This month, all Cortec waterproof vinyl plank flooring is on sale at Surgenian's starting at $339 a square foot. We offer the largest Cortec selection in Madison. Take advantage of unprecedented sale pricing with 18-month financing. Local, sustainable Surgenian's. Let's summer. Let's dine out by truly dining out. Let's send smoke signals to the neighbors, then serve up the freshest of food with a side of fresh air. Let's raise our tongs to tasty by introducing our grills to new thrills and make mouths water more than a backyard slip and slide. Let's live a little more by having another s'more. Because summer is here, and no one does summer like Festival Foods. Right now, traffic's pretty smooth this evening. Here's a live look at the Beltline at Todd Drive. Folks cruising along 
just fine both east and westbound. We don't have any major delays along the Beltline, which is good news. Uh, downtown, of course, we have a few slowdown spots, uh, but otherwise things look pretty smooth actually throughout Dane County right now. The interstate also looks pretty good. From Janesville to the Beltline, 25 minutes. Sauk City to Middleton at 16 minutes. And Sub Prairie to downtown, 9 minutes this evening. That's a quick look at traffic. All right, Dana, thank you. A toddler from China has become a viral sensation <laughs> thanks to some pretty remarkable basketball skills. The boy reportedly learned this by watching his father and was imitating him by the time he was just a year old. And all that practice has paid off in viral. Look at that little dribbling wow. drill. It's about the size of the ball, that little guy. <laughs> it's all paid off because he's become a... Uh, a viral sensation here, viral fame. The boy has some <laughs> 400,000 followers. Yeah, you know, when dad's walking around with a basketball hoop around his neck, you know that the pandemic has yeah, exactly. really gotten boring for all of us. But hey, whatever entertains you. And this oh, guy. He is priceless. He hasn't missed one yet. No. This, this is the one that impresses me because literally the ball comes up to his shoulder and <laughs> yeah, sitting on I the know. ground. Needs a little bit bigger hoop, too. Look at all the creative ways they found for him to practice. Yeah. Too. Oh, he's pretty priceless. fun. Oh, he's adorable. Well, now several months in, many people are feeling like they're living on a Corona coaster, experiencing the daily ups and downs of the pandemic. There are real benefits to cultivating minimalism, which is designing a simple life and returning to basics to help us cope and focus on what's important. UW Health Distinguished Psychologist Shyla Morgan is back with us to show us how. Hi, Shyla. Good to see hey, you. Shyla. Well, thanks so for having me. So what are you talking about when you're talking about minimalism? It's such an important concept. Learning to live with less means mental health during the pandemic. I'm hearing so many people saying they're over this COVID-19. They want to just have things return to normal and we know they're not in the foreseeable future. So cultivating minimalism of really paring down life to its simplest terms can really help us hone in on what's important and can really make sure that we're filling our time and our days with those things that are going to bring us joy and help us stay resilient. Yeah, and a lot of people are doing home projects right now, particularly those who are stuck at home. So why not? It doesn't always have to be a big, you know, building project. You can take things out too, right? Keep it Absolutely. simple. Absolutely. Yeah, you know, simplify, simplify, simplify. Um, I think pre-COVID, many of us would agree that we were running around with like a chicken with its head cut off. Mm -hmm. We had that FOMO, fear of missing out. And when we look back at life pre-COVID, we can see we spent a lot of our time doing things that were unnecessary, that brought us stress, and um, were just obligations. So the advantage of cultivating minimalism and keeping it simple is we can return to those things that really bring us joy, that make us happy. Often less is more here. And it's a great time, as you said, Eric, to get outside and do some things, whether it's gardening or playing with your child outside or taking a walk. We wanna really soak in the warmer weather. But when we simplify in that way, we get clarity about really what is in our best interest and what would really fill us up in a meaningful way. I love one of your pieces of advice to love people, not things, and to sort of focus on what really matters, experiences uh, and time together, which is hard to come by yeah. nowadays. Absolutely, we can't take the stuff with us, but what we leave, our legacy is often how we make people feel. So make sure you're prioritizing those relationships. I think with um, all the masks we're wearing, we miss out on seeing people smile, and many people are craving having that good hug. And many people are feeling lonely, so if you're not able to get together with people, if you find yourself a little isolated, use the power of visualization. The brain doesn't necessarily distinguish between what we visualize and reality, so we can use that to our advantage. You could imagine and remember the best hug you ever had, or bring to mind somebody you love and their care that you have for them or they showed you. And when we do that, we generate some positive emotion, we light up some of those same pathways in the brain, and we can kind of change our brain chemistry. And that can really help us stay connected with people, even if we can't see them face to face. Yeah, another thing you want to talk about is kind of letting go of expectations of what we all thought was normal, right? <laughs> yeah, right. I think of this as a daily practice. We're not returning to the old normal. I think we're going to, years from now, say life pre-COVID and life after COVID. Right. So each day, think about letting go of an expectation of normal and instead create a new normal. And one last practice, if you find yourself feeling really overwhelmed, scared, frustrated, burned out, 
One of my favorite practices is a brief mindfulness practice, which is two feet, one breath, release. And all you simply do is just feel your feet on the ground, feel that connection with the earth that's centering, take one breath and then release tension, especially in the face, the jaw and the tongue. If you relax this area, especially the tongue, that will help your mind calm. You'll get into the moment and you, in a sense, are creating your new normal. Think of what is one thing I can do to really cultivate a sense of purpose or meaning or joy today. That might be one of those highlights of the day you can create that will help you navigate this Corona coaster and challenge you. Today. <laughs> Susan and I are going to do that right after the Two four. Two steps, Before breath, the five. release. Yes, I love it. Yep. Between the four and the five, <laughs> yeah, we'll do exactly. that. Exactly. Shiloh, always good to see you. Some great words there for people that they can use. Thank you very oh, much. Thank you so much for having me. See you again soon, Shiloh. Thank you so much. Yeah,